So first up, I want to thank you guys so much. Actually, when I mentioned in my last uh, Mountain Pour recipe video that I had broken my crock and didn't know how to get a new one for my, you know, slow cooker, specifically the one that I use for soap, I got so many comments and so many DMs and all of you guys just being awesome. And also, someone sent me one, which is cool, and cuckoo bananas. Thank you so much for sending me a crock. It's very nice. And um, yeah, thank you. That was super cool and really quick. And you, you know, saved me having to do one more thing. So thank you for doing that one thing for me. I appreciate you. As I said, we are going to be doing another Mountain Pour Clear Glycerin Soap Base from scratch recipe today. But I have to do my thing, because it's my thing, and send you to the intro. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 298 of 365 days of soap, and today, as I said, we're doing another Melt and Pour Glycerin Soap Base from Scratch recipe, and we're mixing it up a little bit. Now, I showed you in, you know, the last video, the lathering, the differences, and also the clarity differences between the one that I used the isopropyl alcohol for and the one that I use Everclear for. So fun. There's a difference in bubble, there's a different, I mean, there's also a difference in recipe, but there is a difference in bubble and there's a difference in clarity. So we're going to try it with an actual, you know, alcohol that one would consume. And I don't have any Everclear. Uh, a, I don't consume that. I don't know why anyone would. <laughs> really. But two, I didn't have any left because I had actually just finished making the Everclear soap and so I was out. So I went looking around the house to see what I could find and in the bar, in the pontoon, where we currently are, I found a bottle of Rumpelmann's that was given to us like over Christmas and yay for us, we don't drink Rumpelmann's. So um, we're going to try that in soap. And I think it might be interesting. So let's get to the video and we can look at how I changed the recipe and also, you know, what happens with the rumplements, you know, there. Okay, so new recipe. Instead of what we did yesterday, we are going to be using 30% stearic, 70% coconut oil, eliminating the caster completely, still going with the 5% super fat as well as the two times sugar solution, two times glycerin, and one time alcohol, but we're using a weird alcohol. We are using Rumpelmann's. Now, it's 50% uh, alcohol by volume, so not nearly as high as, as Everclear, right? But I did get the question, actually, about whether or not you can just use any clear liquor, alcohol thing. And the answer to this is really no, and it actually will take way too long to explain um, because I, that's, that's how alcohol is made. It's all about how alcohol is made and what it's made from. And this is a short video, but with this, we are starting it out the exact same way. We're going to talk more about why no in just a minute, but starting it out by um, dissolving the sugar into the water and making sure it's heated up but not scorched 
And then, you know, moving on and measuring everything out. Again, no castor oil. We are eliminating that to try to eliminate some yellowing and uh, trying a different kind of alcohol today. And with this, one of the reasons why it's a short video is because I wasn't recording when I did this. I put the lye solution into the heated oils. The oils were kept at around 200 degrees. Did that, put it in, did the thing thing, did the mixy mix, did not put the sugar into the oils for saponification and or for emulsion. And it got really thick really fast because I wasn't paying attention. Now I'm going to add in, that is my alcohol and glycerin mix and the one in the pyrex there is my sugar solution and then i'm going to mix all of this up but to that before i start talking about rumplemans and the different types of alcohol i also got questions because you look you see how that looked like soap paste right it's a really happy accident that i over uh mixed this so i could be reminded about those questions. Can you use soap paste to make a uh, melt and pour soap? Yeah, totally can. You got to make sure that your soap paste recipe, if you're wanting a clear soap, is again, doesn't have any cloudy oils, any dark colored oils, and I mean, unreasonably dark color oils, and really is not super high in unsaponifiables, which will also make your solution cloudy when it's all said and done. But yeah, you can totally use soap paste just basically this same way. You measure out your soap paste and whatever that amount is, you then go ahead and double it for your sugar solution. You double it for your glycerin solution and you match it for your alcohols. And you can always play with those numbers too to see which you like better. You might prefer the sugar being at 2.5 times and the glycerin being at, you know, one time and the alcohol, you know, I would say no more than two times alcohol. I wouldn't really play with the alcohol, but you can totally play with the percentages and the amounts that you put in for your solvents, no problem. But with this, now I guess, I mean, okay, first up, again, recapping, yes, you can use soap paste for this to make melt and pour. You can do it. Maybe we'll do a video on that. Do you wanna do a video on that? That could be fun. Anyway, back to the Rumplemans, and as you can see, that is not a uh, that is not a clear or even remotely clear batch of soap there. Well, that's because not all clear alcohols are created equal, right? Like vodka is made out of like potatoes, right? And everybody thinks that like Everclear and vodka are the same thing, but they're not just by the way that they're made, right? You have Everclear itself is what's known as a rectified spirit, so essentially pure grain alcohol, and it goes through a huge distillation process to remove all things and have a very, very high concentrate of alcohol. The, Rumplemans does not go through that. Uh, schnapps do not go through that, and also they're made with like fermented fruits, which is also going to cause you know problems, and uh, obviously the inclusion of peppermint fermented peppermint in all of this is also going to yield not a clear batch of soap. And I've honestly never done this with vodka before, but I imagine based on what potatoes look like that you might be dealing with the same issue with vodka. I just logicking that out. That's what I think. I honestly don't know though. So if you've done it and you've successfully had a clear uh, melt and pour using vodka, you know, let us know in the comments. That's awesome. But for this, it's not looking great, is it? We're going to go ahead and let it set up and firm up and see what we are working with when that is all done and, you know, test the lather and, and do the things because that's what we do around here. Okay, and on to the cut. And it looks very white, doesn't it? Up top. Yep, it's pretty wild. And again, as I said yesterday, my recipe for a melt and pour base is 65% coconut oil, 35% stearic acid, no super fat because the unsaponified oils could cloud the batch and 
add to that after the cook two times a sugar solution, two times of your total oil weight, a sugar solution. Oh, interesting. Now it's not yellow. And on the bottom there, it's clear-ish, right? It had a, a fighting chance, but mostly not. Anyway, adding to my recipe, two times a sugar solution, two times a glycerin solution, and w matching the weight of your oils with an alcohol. Everclear. That's what you get when you do, when you use Everclear. So testing this one out, and we will test all three of them so we have a reminder. This is the one eliminating the castor oil using the peppermint schnapps, and it smells like peppermint. Oh my God, it smells like peppermint. It's pretty delightful, if I'm being honest. And the bubbles are, they're cute. It's a nice, tiny, tight little bubble. I love the hand feel on that. It's very nice. It actually lathers surprisingly well. So that's good, right? We like that for sure. And so eliminating the caster will actually help out with that. And even, you know, more so when you actually include the Everclear. And again, this is yesterday's with the castor oil in it and using isopropyl alcohol, still not a huge bubble, not in love with that. And then this would be, did I not test my, oh, I did, it's in my hand. And then this would be my recipe that I love with using Everclear. So we're gonna go ahead and do that recipe too. Now I want to maybe make it out of soap paste as well and show you guys, cause it's been a while since we've played with soap paste, but yeah, there's some different options or what to use or not to use and what to look for, you know, with your melt and pour bases. But as you can see, they're not super scary. You can do it. And there it is, the uh, peppermint schnapps, uh, clear melt and pour glycerin soap base. And yeah, not super clear. And also smells of peppermint, like nobody's business. I actually went and, cause I was curious. And so I took a piece of that and went and you know washed my face with it and it definitely had the tingles not like uncomfortable tingles but like just the right amount of peppermint you know it was kind of refreshing so that's cool if you're in the market to make a tingling soap this one totally works as far as using rumplemans in you know soap if you're fine with it not being clear that's fine for sure the lather was better on this one absolutely and um yeah, I think ultimately the recipe for the Everclear soap, which I also gave to you in this video, is going to be the best bet if what you're really looking for is a decent bubble and a nice clear soap. So there's that. I hope you guys had fun with this video. I super had fun making it and I'm like now in the groove of wanting to do like more experiments and stuff. So we're gonna keep going on that train because I, I like it a lot. And it's been kind of way too long since we've done experiments. I've been sort of just surviving and existing for the past few months. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me and being okay with that. But yeah, it's time to test some soapy things. So if you're interested, you know, subscribe. For those of you who are subscribed, hey Sudzers, thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything. I'm out of here for today, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.